The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 AM. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. And boy, where do we start today? We're going to start with that jobs number, folks. Quite a beat as non-farm payrolls. We add 467,000 jobs in the month of January. Uh, maybe the biggest story is the revisions going on in that market as well. As we get over to the number, and let's jump right into the technicals. We'll pull it up. Payrolls, you're talking about? There's your headline, folks. Defying the gloom of Omicron, 467,000 jobs added in January. You have the unemployment rate ticking up to 4%. Labor force particip participation climbing could be a good sign for the economy. And boy, you talk about it. We got an upwardly revised 510,000 jobs added in the month of December. I think it was a total of 700,000 plus added over the two prior months. You add up all the numbers, you add up the estimate. We were looking at about 150,000. I think I heard Morgan Stanley out there for negative 250. I was looking for a negative number. I had been talking about it many times this week. You add it all up. You're talking about almost a million more jobs than maybe the market was looking for only 37 minutes ago prior to 8 30 a.m eastern time this morning uh yeah economists were looking for 125,000 was the median number uh median number not quite a great interpretation when you have so many uh such a wide range of estimates here population adjustments a lot of adjustments to reflect updated populations estimates labor force participation rate increased to 62.2 percent um, yeah, and here's the one talking about wages. This is what has the market a little freaked out here, folks. Uh, average hourly earnings rising 0.7% in January. You're up almost 6% from a year ago. Further fanning concerns about the persistence of inflation. The average work week dropped overall 3.6 million. Employed Americans were not at work due to illness in January. More than double that in December. Uh, the job gains were broad-based. We had 151,000 in leisure and hospitality, transportation and warehousing, retail and professional and business services also posting solid increases. Uh, boy, it's going to be an interesting March conversation, folks, when we come into it already. I got uh, yeah, Neil Dada out there talking 50 basis points i got some good friends in the finance industry we're chatting this morning saying maybe march is coming with 50 basis points folks uh it's definitely coming with a hike because you have rising wages you have an economy that's just bristling way above expectations it's important this jobs number could have been a million folks because the revisions they're there OK, and when you look at where you are, you're talking about a number that pushes a million extra jobs. You have wage growth of 0.7 percent on the month. And you're talking about almost 6 percent year over year on that number. And boy, you're seeing markets hit it. You want to talk about a hit, folks. How about yields? We're talking about a yield right now of 1.9 percent, 1.898 to be exact. But let's jump right over to yields. We're going to start things off with the 10 year. And there's a drop for you, folks. We just dropped from about 127.21. Prior to that news, you drop almost a full point. I mean, what is that, 25 ticks or so? We're trading at 127 right now. We were as low as 126.28. And as I mentioned, we got the 10-year yield, basically 1.9%. The 30-year down a full point and three ticks right now. You got commodities trading, of course. You got gold dropping about $20 on that news from 18.15 to 17.96. Silver's down 21 cents right now. You got crude. Look at that acceleration, 92.47. Maybe we'll have to get our man Teddy Kegstat back on the program this week. Uh, today, I met, I joke, he'll be back on the program on Wednesdays. He's been a crude bull, and man, you just can't overstate this market, folks. I mean, did you think that crude from yesterday morning has the potential when it had an 86 handle on it to push a 92 handle prior to the market even opening on Friday? That's the crude market we're dealing with, folks. Remarkable strength in that crude market. You jump over to the equities, and they're taking a little bit of a hit. We had Amazon earnings after the bell last night. We'll get into those in a moment. At one point, you had Amazon trading up 500 bucks per share. I think right now you're trading up about $300 per share. They were putting quite a bit in the market. 
but it only lasted until about 2 in the morning, folks. And you're talking about 75 points in the S&Ps. We just gave up since 2 a.m. Eastern time. You talk about a drop-off. NASDAQ 100, you just gave up 400 points from where we were trading at, actually going below the close last night. With I mean, you have a stock like Amazon. They're going to add about $150 billion in market cap. We'll see how they open. They're pulling back a little bit with the market this morning. But, boy, to give it all back and open under where we were last night, not what the market expected, probably at about 4.15 or 4.30. Uh, whether it was Amazon, we also had Pinterest and Snapchat just blowing it out of the water. At one point, I think Snapchat was up 50%, something bananas, just amazing moves across the board. But let's get into it with the king dog, Amazon. Profit engines are humming, cushioning the blow from the retail slowdown. And the big deal here, uh, they're going to be rising. Well, there's two big deals. They beat on cloud. That's always a big one. Amazon Web Services reported a revenue jump of almost 40% from a year ago. 40%, $17.8 billion, beating the number of 17.37. Operating income, boy, I'd love to have those margins, $5.29 billion, accounting for more than 100% of Amazon's total operating profit for the quarter. I mean, imagine this. Amazon is so fortunate to have this portion of their business, folks, because most consumers, most retail persons, people in the country have no awareness of AWS, right? They see Amazon as the retail giant they are that drops off their packages within 24 to 48 hours at their door, if not sooner. They wouldn't even make money with that part of their business right now if they didn't have AWS. They are literally operating at break even on the retail side of their business just to make ends meet, but that may change as they're up in the price of Prime as well. Ad revenue, 32% to almost $10 billion. That's equaling almost Google's ad growth rate. Google, Facebook, they got a new competitor for ads, man. Until now, Amazon has grouped ads into other business segments, but guess what? They're breaking it out, folks. They surprised investors by breaking advertising as a separate business for the first time, and that's quite a business, man. Some of these companies, right, we're all familiar, whether it's like Apple. Apple has their... Um, their wearable segment, which could be a Fortune 500 company on its own. I, I think it's probably like a Fortune 100 company, something bananas. And that's what you're seeing happening with Amazon, right? Their AWS business could be a Fortune 500 company. Their advertising business alone could probably be a Fortune 500 company. Uh, the story of the fourth quarter is different from the second and third to the extent that the high margin business were able to offset a slowdown in e-commerce and they're jacking up the price of Prime by $20, folks. That's starting in February this month. You had the stock trade higher. We'll jump over to it in a moment. Fourth quarter sales rising 9.4% to $137.4 billion, falling just short of the number they were looking for there. Uh, first period of single digit growth since the third quarter of 2017. Meanwhile, revenue from online stores dropped 1% to 66.1 billion. But guess what, folks? It's all about cloud. It's all about cloud and advertising now. Uh, two huge growth areas with huge margins for Amazon. And yeah, we're going to see how this thing trades on the open man. Uh, being hampered a bit from the jobs number. But look at that, just like that. I mean, just, you can't overstate the move, folks. Right to 3,300 on the dot. Our man Basil Chapman is next. He loves those round numbers. How about that? 3,300 on the dot. Uh, we're trading about 3,120 right now. What are you trading up? $350 per share, folks. Not bad, not bad at all. Stay tuned, folks. We got a lot to talk about. We'll be right back right after the break. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. It's going to be an interesting open. we got a bounce going on in these markets right now. And boy, you're talking about 25 points in the S&P. I just put things on a one-minute chart to see the volatility we've had coming out of that jobs number. You spike from about 44.71, make it down to 44.38. And uh, over the last 15 minutes, it's been a one-way trip to higher prices right now. you got the S&P's negative by about seven points, NASDAQ 100. You're talking about a spike at 8.30. We were trading at 14,617. You traded down 250 points just like that. We've bounced 100 points in the NASDAQ 100. We jump over over to some of those FANG stocks. Amazon trading at about 31.10 right now. We jump to Microsoft shares trading down about $2 to 299. We jump over to Apple shares trading at 171 from about 174 right now. Uh, jumping back to Amazon real quickly, so really interesting action in terms of Amazon, Snapchat, Pinterest, all these stocks punished severely, to put it lightly, yesterday having to do with Facebook's demise. Let's jump over to Facebook. Uh, Facebook trading at 231. We're going to open below where we were any part of yesterday. Facebook wiped out, I think, 240 to $250 billion of market cap just in that one equity alone. Look where we are in that equity this morning. You jump back to Amazon. Now, obviously, after the fact, you can make the statement that they were obviously unfairly punished as a result of Facebook earnings as they accelerate higher. Uh, Going to be interesting to see where the market has supply meeting demand on the open here. Now, let's jump over to Pinterest shares. Are they going to give it all back? I cannot believe that one, folks. You don't often see a stock go up 30 plus percent in the aftermarket and give it all back back by the pre-market. You're talking about only a dollar and fifty away from that area right now. You're trading at twenty six dollars and Snapchat. My goodness, they're not going to give it all back. You are up to forty dollars. We almost made it to that round number for our man Basil Chapman. Thirty nine ninety five on sale. Uh, Snapchat from twenty four bucks. Folks, that is a sixty plus percent rise in the price of Snapchat to almost forty dollars. Now in context here, okay, you're only back to where we were trading at on January 13th. We are still 50% of the price that this thing was trading at on, in October before you fell out of bed on their last earnings event this morning. You don't have the price open yet, but we're going to open between about $35 to $40 on this equity. But it's going to be an interesting one. Did not expect the market to turn around that quickly, folks. The discourse going on this morning, and it might be rightfully so, okay, is that, man, this economy is rocking. We got 467,000 jobs added in January. You have an upwardly revised 510,000 
add in December, the unemployment rate ticking up, but barely to 4% as a result of labor force participation rising. That's been one of the comments that maybe we don't have such a bustling economy when we have 10 million plus jobs open, okay, and we have labor force participation, not where it needs to be. Well, we're starting to see that number tick back up, and that is the reason why we have the unemployment rate ticking back up as well on a month that we added 400 plus thousand jobs. Um, just you can't overstate the action. I'm looking forward to the open. We got eight and a half minutes, folks. We got all the markets in the negative this morning, and we got Bitcoin popping a bit. There's your 15 minute action on Bitcoin. Overnight, you traded up to about 38,000 from 36,000 yesterday. Right now, not too much of a give back on those numbers for Bitcoin so far, but crude sitting right at 92 bucks, man. You put crude on a year daily, you talk about a rocket ship, man. This has been a one way ship, folks, since December 2nd to higher prices. You even back it up to really December 20th, you had a price of 66.12. And just like that, you're trading at $92 in the price of crude. All right. Let's jump around and see what else we got going on in terms of stocks. And we got a lot to cover, like I talked about. Regeneron, they were out with their numbers, 2372 versus 1835. Revenue also topping forecast. COVID-19 antibody therapy, as well as its eagle, uh, excuse me, eye drug, Ilia, maybe? Uh, working hard to develop an updated therapy that will be effective against the Omicron variant. R-E-G-N is their symbol. And they're going to open just barely lower. A little bit of volatility, no huge action on their earnings, down to about 618 from 620 yesterday. Uh, we talked about Amazon. Let's get into Snap. So Snapchat, as I mentioned, 62% first ever quarterly net profit. When you have a company that transitions from losing money to making money, I don't have to tell you how important that is, folks. Uh, Snap reported earnings for the fourth quarter Thursday, beat estimates on earnings, revenue, and user growth. The report comes a day after Facebook parent Meta basically just disappointed the whole market. So getting into the numbers on Snapchat, 22 versus 10 cents, they beat by almost $100 million, folks. And that is a big beat when you're only talking about 1.2 billion. Percentage wise, huge beat there. Global daily active users, market loves to see that because Facebook was really missing there. 319 versus 317 and revenue per user going up as well. Guidance, 1.03 to 1.08 billion. Market was only looking for 1.01. It expects daily active users, 328 to 330. That's a beat as well. Um, yeah, they have to contend with similar headwinds, okay? And that's talking about the hit from Apple's privacy, but big numbers across the board. You did not see anything in these Snapchat earnings that resembled the type of carnage that sent Facebook trading lower and uh, just a remarkable move. And this is where, folks, you know, when you see this type of carnage, right, where well, you just had Snapchat shade from 34 to 24 coming into earnings, you just shaved, what is that? That's almost a 30% haircut coming in, and a big portion of that had to do with Facebook, okay? There's your drop-off from Facebook, from 32 to 24. Yes, they are facing similar headwinds, but Facebook is their own entity, folks. They have a PR battle that is almost unmatched. I was talking to somebody last night, and I was saying, uh, there's not many things that span the political aisle these days, and Facebook spans it well, man. Nobody is a fan of Facebook, whether it's Republicans are not a fan of Facebook going on there, Democrats ain't a fan of it either, and rightfully so. It is a cesspool, folks, Facebook. Uh, I would advise you to keep yourself off it and your kids off it if you like having quality of life and just a clear mind, because that is not Facebook at all. Snapchat, though, trading up to about 36 bucks right now. Going to be an interesting open to see whether they pop or they trade lower. You're going to see some volatility, folks. Anytime you have an equity trading up almost 60% on their earnings, there's going to be some volatility as this thing tries to figure out where accurately supply equals demand. Pinterest down to about 26.25 from 24.51. We jump over to Amazon shares still holding above 3,100 so far this morning. And there's Pinterest. So Pinterest, four cents ahead of the estimates, quarterly earnings of 49 cents, better than expected revenue, first ever profitable year. I mean, they both did it. Remarkable, right? You have Pinterest come out, first ever quarterable, uh, excuse me, first ever profitable year amid strengthening ad revenue. Snapchat, similar deal. Uh, just remarkable the way they come through. Now, Ford was out with their numbers as well. 26 cents a share. That's a miss versus 45 cents a share. They're going to open lower at about 1840. You're down about a buck 50 from their numbers last night. You just made basically a pre-market session low on Ford shares. Now, Ford, 
probably just got a little bit ahead of itself, right? This thing accelerated from a price of $12 and change back in September. You push $25.87 back less than a month ago, folks. That thing falls out of bed. Uh, be careful as these equities rise and fall because, yes, Ford, well positioned with the new Ford Electric 150, um, pickup truck, all that stuff going on. But anytime you double the share price in the span of a few months, folks, a lot of that's going to be priced in. You're seeing it happen with Ford. You're going to open at about 1840, all things considered. You're going to be right at this area that we've had a little bit of support, but you might break below there. And be careful, folks, because you break below this area, you're going to be at about 1840, critical level, because it was a one way shot from $12 and change up to right where we're going to open at about 1840. All right. This is going to be an interesting open, folks. We got three minutes. We're going to be coming back right at 930. Not many days you get to digest what we get to digest on the opening bell this morning. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we get the S&Ps opening in positive Territory, I tell you, folks, it's a remarkable acceleration when you look because the conversation this morning, I mean, conversation everywhere right now is saying 50 basis points is at least on the table for March. I want to give you the headline right now on Bloomberg.com. Strong U.S. jobs report raises odds of March half point Fed hike. It raises the odds 
That is undeniable. Whether it actually comes in, that's another story, folks. Chairman Powell, he does not want to surprise and freak out the market, but he might have no choice. And that's where the argument comes in, in terms of a million jobs, you could argue, with revisions and with the number that we saw for the headline for the month of January, robust strength in the jobs market, and we got rising wages as well. Let's jump over to some of those companies with earnings. We got Amazon right now up 10.3%. You're trading at 3,065. We jump over to the other companies with earnings. Pinterest up about 1.6%. They basically give it all back. Look at that. What did we just trade to? We traded to 24.27. Yeah, that's remarkable. You did. You gave it all back. We closed yesterday at 24. 46. You gave it all back on Pinterest shares. My goodness. Uh, Snapchat, not, whoops, not quite the same. They are holding on to 42% gains overnight for Snapchat. We jump over to Ford shares right now, down about 7% on their earnings. We talked about Regeneron out with their numbers, basically flat right now, down about six tenths percent. We jump over to commodities, crude, holding well at about 92 bucks right now. The gold contract sitting right at about 1800. And let's jump to notes and bonds as this market opens up. You're looking at a 10 year down 20 ticks at 127 on the dot. You get the 30 year down a full point and five ticks right now. We're talking about a yield that just ticked actually above 1.9%, 1.901 to be exact. All right, let's jump around and see what else we got going on in this market. And we're going to kick things off with where are we going? Yeah, jumping down the line. So, of course, we got the futures. All right, we got the numbers we're talking about. Cloud earnings on Amazon, we talked about. They're raising it. Snap as well and Ford. We're pretty much jumped through the line. Let's see how some of these FANG stocks are trading right now with the Amazon, uh, the Amazon, the NASDAQ 100 trading up 16 points. We jump over to Microsoft shares relatively well. I mean, remarkable, folks. Think about this. These growth companies, okay, a company like Microsoft, you're sitting basically flat right now. And the market is talking about that we might get 50 basis points next month. Market handling this pretty well right now, I'd say. Considering that conversation, maybe they're not too glorified in terms of their estimates of the Fed really hiking things, because that would be a shocker, 50 basis points. But it's in the cards. It's possible, folks. Chairman Powell could not have sounded more confident in this economy when he was speaking. And I imagine this is only going to bolster that case, that the economy is rocking. We need to hike rates. The economy can handle it. This is not like the last time that they had to hike rates. Uh... That conversation just only got a little bit more complicated with quite a jobs number and rising wages, as we know, as well. All right, let's take a look at that gold contract, see how we're trading right now at 1801. Quite the drop off, quite the volatility yesterday. Gold makes it right back down to a similar area. You trade down to 1790 yesterday. We spiked to just below 1795 this morning. Take a look at gold on a daily. Let's back it up even a little bit more for a three year weekly to see the full context from the COVID lows of about 1450 up to almost 2100. I mean, just remarkable, right? You look at it from June of last year, folks, all right? Just zoom it in. I mean, we are trading between about 1770 and 1850. We've risen above that area on a couple occasions, below that area a couple occasions. But a remarkable tight range in gold when you consider what's happened in the market. Excuse me, over that period of time. Uh, remarkable to say the least. All right, I want to bring up one more part of the Amazon story, too. We've got too many, too many articles up here. Here we go. So it'll be interesting to see how much Amazon actually adds, as this might be one of the biggest gains in market history. So Facebook yesterday had the biggest wipeout in terms of $251 billion. Just yesterday alone, they lost, and Facebook's trading lower. On top of that as well this morning, they're going to add to that number as they're down another 3%. That's quite a weekly bar you got going on Facebook shares, folks. Uh, you're down to 230. Let's put it back on a daily. Continuing the slide to lower prices for Facebook shares. You got Amazon right now up about 10%, trading at 3055 uh, And they are going to be one of the biggest ads. Now, PetroChina in 2007... Not sure what was going on there. They added $600 billion. Maybe that's like when they went IPO public, gaining market value. I don't know, but that seems skewed in one way or the other. Uh, aside from that, it's the usual suspects. Aramco is in there as well. But Apple, just recently, January 28th, $179 billion they had. Uh, Amazon, probably not right at 155 right now as they've given back some of it, but you're up about 9.6%, trading at 3045 
I tell you, folks, if you're looking for some Amazon, all right, this stock's been stuck in a consolidation since June of 2020. You're getting into prices at Amazon right now that you were basically trading at a year and a half ago. Uh, didn't quite have the run up and the run down that you saw in some of those other tech companies. Didn't get ahead of itself. Yes, you had quite a run. But if you're talking about retirement accounts, folks, okay, you're talking about giving this a little bit of time. It's always nice when you see that type of consolidation. And man, you got quite a company here when you're talking about growth in cloud. And I'm biased, all right? I got some Amazon in my retirement account. But you're talking about cloud, you're talking about the advertising segment, and you're talking about jacking up prices now for Prime, which is only just uh, guaranteed to add some money to that as canceling Prime. It's gonna take a while for people who are familiar with Prime, folks. I mean, I go on Amazon, I think I've been a Prime member 10 years, something crazy, even longer than that maybe. Maybe it was 2009. Uh, I mean, I don't even like buying items in any Prime on there. I go in the search item on, on Amazon and I literally check the little box that says only show me items that are Prime eligible. I don't know how people shop on Amazon if you're not shopping Prime. Point being, they have a lot of price control there. Uh, don't see many people canceling because they're going to hike prices from, I think, 119 to 139 So keep that in mind. Yes, you're up 9%. But, folks, you're up 9%, okay, for some context here. And you're getting in at prices, though, that we saw on Wednesday. Well, geez, if you said on Wednesday you can get in to Amazon at about 3000 and I'm going to tell you what they're going to come out with their numbers, and they're going to come out with numbers that are going to beat on cloud, they're going to raise prices for Prime, um, they're going to break out advertising revenue for the first time, I think you might be a buyer there. The flip side of that is we also have a 50 basis point hike potentially coming down in March. And you better believe it, folks, uh, because this jobs number, just a huge surprise, 400 plus thousand on the heels of the ADP number, which saw a negative number on the ADP number. Remarkable beat. Chairman Powell probably scratching his head a little bit, wondering what the best course of action is right now. Uh, but the market, a little bit worried, maybe rightfully so, that the Fed's going to come fast and furious. And they may need to, folks, because we're going to get some CPI data, I believe, next week. And that may be really the catalyst, because we get a hot CPI data number next week, and you're going to see a lot of talk start trying to push that Fed to 50 basis points, folks. Because you get a hot CPI data, there is no denying that we're talking about millions of jobs being added in an economy that is rocking to the tune of inflationary pressures of about 7% a year. That one is going to push a little bit of fear in the Fed, and probably rightfully so, uh, to put it lightly. And uh, you're seeing you're seeing the 10-year, and so react accordingly as you're stuck right at about 127 right now, and the 10-year sitting comfortably at about one9 percent We're rising. We're almost 1.91 right now on that 10-year. All right, folks, stay tuned. We're going to be taking a quick break. We'll come back. We'll go over some of the other equities with action today, and we'll go over some of the other indices with action. We'll be right back in three minutes. Stay tuned, folks. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. I said it's going to be a wild one, folks. We are 12 minutes and 28 seconds into the trading day, and it's turning into a wild one already. Check out the NASDAQ 100. We're up half a percent right now in the NASDAQ 100. Now, of course, this being helped immensely by Amazon, catching a little bit of a bid. You got Amazon back more than 10 percent in the positive. Folks, this is a five-minute bar. They began at 940. We just jumped 100 points in the NASDAQ 100 in the last two minutes and 48 seconds. The S&Ps are back positive by 10 points right now. You're talking about 40 points off the lows that we made at 905 this morning. And look at this acceleration we got going on, folks, right now in the last few minutes. S&Ps just jumping 20 points. Dow back in positive territory right now by 48. What is so remarkable about what's going on in this market right now, we're seeing yields rise continue. We got the tenure at 1.91% right now. What is so remarkable in this market, when you think about it, is that it is so difficult sometimes to forecast what the market is going to do, even if you knew what the jobs or the economic data would be, right? If you said that, hey, we're gonna get a job number of 400,000, we're gonna get revisions of 700,000 plus for the months of December and November, uh, we're gonna get rising wages to the tune of 0.7% month over month, we're gonna be talking about wages that are almost up 6% year over year, and everybody is now gonna be talking about whether it's 25 basis points or 50 basis points in March, and guess what? Markets are going to be green across the board. We got the Russell down two points right now. I don't think that's where everybody would have went with their market correlation. Now, Amazon alone is having a huge impact on these markets, folks. Uh, as Amazon now up at 3,075, you're up almost 11%. I mean, Amazon shares just jumped $55 from where you were trading at just after the opening bell this morning. It's going to be a wild one, to put it lightly. All right, let's jump around to see what else we have going on. Some of the headlines I got up here, let's jump to some travel stocks. Let's jump to some cruise ships. Not quite the bid that they want just yet. Royal Caribbean, Royal Caribbean posting another loss as Omicron weighs on cruise booking. So it looks like Omicron did not weigh on the jobs number as many expected. It is still weighing on that cruise. Uh, cruises, it's going to be the last domino uh, to get back to reality, folks. Shares of cruise operators slip after eighth quarterly loss. Company sees return to profitability in the second half of the year. And they may be right. We're around the corner, folks. We really are. Um, we're coming out of this last wave. People are going to be ready to break out. There's your action on Royal Caribbean. This thing's just been chopping around at this price level basically since June of last year. Now, think about this for a second. I mentioned to you earlier that you're getting Amazon shares at prices that were June of last year. You're getting Royal Caribbean shares that were at June of last year as well. 
I would say that Amazon has had a much better last year and a half than Royal Caribbean has had. Okay, they've been on a status quo pause. Amazon pulled forward all that growth, of course. Okay, they went from a price of about seventeen hundred dollars and change during the pandemic to push to thirty-two to thirty-seven hundred dollars. They pulled back to that level. But boy, I can't emphasize it enough, folks. You know, you're looking for some action. You don't have any action yet in Amazon. I'm biased. Okay, I'm putting it out there. But you can't go wrong on that equity, in my opinion. Okay, doesn't mean that, of course, it can't trade lower. You just saw the type of carnage this thing can have. And many people would not have thought that Amazon could have underperformed as they did when we were stuck at home for a better part of 2021, much more so. So then many of us, right, the idea was we get the vaccines in November of 2020. We start administering them to the general population somewhere in the ballpark of March or April of 2021. Yeah, it just didn't happen, folks. Uh, we were at home. We were ordering items at home. Amazon's just stuck at these prices. Now, we're almost back at 3100 right now. I've said my case. I've made the case. But long term, folks, you're talking about big multiples. But think about it again. I've said it before. Can you imagine being a company like Walmart that has to compete with a company like Amazon and Amazon can do it at break even prices? I mean, that's the story that I see, okay? Because they can do it on the retail side at break even prices, which is why they seem to always deliver a, a higher quality of service, folks. I've talked about it before myself. Now, I like Walmart as well, okay? I like them, I do, because on a contextual basis of just pure market value, you got Walmart right now down six tenths percent. They are back above this trend line we have going on. Now we have some Walmart in my newsletter. Do we? Yes, we do. Uh, back above 140.16. Now you jump over and you talk about market cap wise, okay? You're talking about a company, Walmart, that's under $400 billion market cap. They got some room for growth, folks, but they don't have AWS and they don't have the advertising they have. And they have people like Amazon that can run their business at break even. The only reason I like Walmart is because they have a market cap of $380 billion versus a company like Amazon this morning that is opening with a market cap of approaching, I think, 1.7. Where are we at? 1.56. We've pulled back a little bit. We're at about 1.65. Amazon trading it at 3,083, up 11%. Let's see how the other culprits are trading with Snapchat up 46%. You don't see that often, folks. Now, Snapchat, you're talking about a company right now valued at $57 billion. Folks, I mean, imagine that. You had a company that was tens of billions of dollars, and overnight, they just say, guess what? You're going to be worth 50% more than they, we thought you were yesterday. And Pinterest catching a little bit of a bit as well, back to up about 7.5% right now on their numbers. All right. The other news out here is Kohl's. Let's stay on the retail. So Kohl's, they think, uh, they think all these bidders are undervaluing their business, and so they're deploying the poison pill to make sure they can't have a hostile takeover. You got Kohl's, that's your weekly. Okay, let's put it back on a daily to see the action. Now, you spike higher on January 21st. That was on the news that they got takeover bids going on for Kohl's. And the headline, to bring it up, is you got Kohl's saying, guess what? They're rejecting those takeover offers as too low, and they hire the bankers to come with it, man. Uh, rejected the takeover offers as it received as too low and engage bankers to field interest in the company. They say, come on, we need more bids, folks. You're undervaluing what we have going on here. Uh, and they break out, I believe they call the the poison pill. I was reading it somewhere. Here we go, another article. Uh, let's get this one. Uh, they initiate the poison pill. So what they did is, uh, yes, the department store has adopted a shareholder rights plan, otherwise known as a poison pill, in order to avert a hostile takeover. The plan is effective immediately and expires February 2023. So they have an investor day coming March 7th, and that's when they'll provide more updates. But they're going to be trying to field higher higher prices, and uh, the market liking that as it's up 1.3 percent, basically up with the market right now. Uh, Coles trading at 60 bucks, and this thing. Yeah, you were at 20 bucks during the COVID lows, but you're chopping around right where you were almost a year ago on coal shares at about 60 bucks so far this morning. All right, let's jump around to some of those commodities. We got crude pushing basically right at session highs right now, 92.73. We're up almost with a 93 handle. Folks, we had a 90, uh, 90. We had an 86 handle yesterday in crude. When I was talking to our man Teddy Kegstat on Wednesday, we were pushing about 88 or 89. We're pushing 92.74, folks. Uh, it seems all but inevitable that 95 bucks to 100 is the next stop. Where we go from there, 
you know, that's quite a mental mental case. The $100 number, folks, we're going to see where we react. But just the last two days alone, whoops, just the last two days alone, do not underestimate this crude market, man, because it might blow right through $100 the way this thing is trading right now. Crude up 2.7% right now. And uh, let's check back on King Dog Amazon up at about 3,082, 11%. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got one more segment. I'll be coming back in three minutes. We'll finish up the show. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, billable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up three points right now. NASDAQ 100 up 31. Dow slipping into negative territory right now off 15. Checking in with some of the most active stocks out there. You got Tesla up about nine tenths percent, pushing 900 bucks right now. We jump over to King Dog Apple. Apple down about nine tenths percent. We jump over to Microsoft shares holding on to gains right now. Look at that pop on Microsoft, about $5 from where we were pre-market to 302.59 from Microsoft shares. You jump over to Google Alphabet after their big beat on Tuesday. Remarkable that you almost give it all back right google alphabet trading at 2750 coming into their earnings on tuesday you just traded to 2800 after opening just 
Wednesday morning at above 3,000 on Google shares. You jump over to Amazon shares, trading up almost 10% at 3,050. Jump over to Pinterest shares, holding on to some of those gains up 6.4%. And Snapchat, the big winner of the day, up, we'll call it 50%, 47.5% up on that number. And folks, I'm going to jump over to one comment I want to highlight. And unfortunately, it's going to seem political, but it shouldn't. All right, you got two members of the Republican Party, uh, Liz Cheney, Cheney and Adam Kinzinger getting reprimanded by their own party. And I just want to read you this from the Republican National Committee head. We've had two members engage in a Democratic-led persecution of ordinary citizens who engaged in legitimate political discourse. Um, folks, it's a real unfortunate deal that we had what happened last year on January 6th, and we now have an entire party that is calling it legitimate political discourse. That's the head of the Republican, Republican National Committee calling what happened ordinary citizens engaging in legitimate political discourse. Yesterday I was on, I showed you pictures of my son who turned one year old two days ago, all right? I wanna protect our country, folks. January 6th was not legitimate political discourse. There's a lot of amazing Republicans out there, all right? I hope you speak up for your party, folks, because that's not what America stands for, and it's a sad day in reality, and there's no denying it. All right, we're gonna stay tuned, folks. We got the S&Ps up seven. NASDAQ catching a bid yet again. We're back up 70 points right now at 14,561. Dow negative 30, and we got the 10-year yield, folks, above 1.9%. Stay tuned, we got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. Love those round numbers. Where are we going today? And of course, we got our man Larry Pesavento. He's going to be trying and be at the Saddle at 11. Live programming all day, folks. It's going to be a wild one. Stay tuned. Have a great Friday.